here I am back from housing court, which I went to armed with my uh, swastika jewelry and my cross and my medicinal marijuana t-shirt. Maggie looked at me and she goes, you're going to be going from here to court like, uh, where's your briefcase? Where are you going to put your Uzi? So here's what happened in housing court. Thanks to what I've learned from Joe Barton and Jay Deverman, I approached it as a sovereign human being in her own right, sui juris, without prejudice, all rights reserved. So before the civil court, the city of New York, the housing part, I put a motion. This is a notice of the motion, and then later on there'll be the motion. This is stamped by the court clerk. After it was stamped, then it, they told me to take it up to the judge. And uh, have you waiting with bated breath while I read it. Take notice, I, Paula Gloria Tsakonis, will move this court located at 111 Center Street, New York, New York, on the 8th floor, Part C, room 844 at 9.30 a.m., July 19, 2010, to extend the time to prepare for my case. Due to my not being a lawyer, I motion the court to accept this motion, although not having been served within the seven-day period within which to bring motions. I will also move this court to order 26 Gramercy Park, that's, that's my board, or whoever they're the puppets for. One, to acknowledge that this action, to acknowledge this action to have been null and void from the beginning due to lack of jurisdiction, due to my not having a landlord-tenant relationship with 26 Gramercy Park. Two, to provide access from the incorporation of 26 Gramercy Park to the present, including weekly updates to the originals so I can copy the corporate charters, incorporation papers and founding papers, all mortgage papers, agreements and receipts, for all city tax receipts, repairs to the building, electricity, water, phone, gas, fines, investments, and all payments to personnel of 26 Gramercy Park uh, Owners Corporation. And I will move the court to recognize all my property rights as a sovereign human being with inalienable rights, particularly privacy, liberty, life, and happiness. So that's the notice of the motion, and the motion itself, I just, I said, I just sort of felt that said it all. So that's it. However, you, and then you have at the bottom a copies going to the attorney general, to the uh, lawyers for the so-called landlords. I mean, that's really what they are, even though it's in, and it's in housing court. But in truth, I'm supposed to be a shareholder. And then Judge Spears was supposed to have watched it. Oops, I'm starting to give it away, but. Uh, let's go on. So that's the motion, which is the same thing. I mean, you can do a little bit more blah, 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 but I didn't. I put it all in my affidavit. Okay, motion, and what I'm going to do is I read this so as to not be too terribly boring. I'm going to just sort of spin this camera around so you can see my fabulous 322 square foot apartment for which my maintenance, what it costs to maintain is 300, is over $900 a month. And in 10 years and paying $100,000, all I got were three big windows. There's one big window. There's another big window. These were replaced. And then there's another one over there. And then I got uh, one, a fourth little window here in the bathroom. Let's go take a look at that. Okay, here's the little window in the bathroom. And of course, what you're doing is you've got this beautiful location. But if they're going to say in their paperwork that they're maintenance, Maintenance shouldn't be different just because you're in a fabulous location, which I totally acknowledge. It's become my home. I love it. Okay, so what I'm saying is motion for an extension of time to prepare my case. What I need as an owner and shareholder of this corporation, what I need as an owner and shareholder of this corporation to get due process and equal protection is for my adversary to supply me with certain facts so I may properly launch my legal defense and prepare my legal attack. Once I am assured of proper jurisdiction, due process, and equal protection, I intend to point out that my opponent has violated me and committed crimes against me, and that only a criminal court, court has the proper jurisdiction, not a housing court that upholds rental agreements that I do not have with my adversary. 
As a shareholder who believes crimes are being committed and is a victim of those crimes, I'm entitled to these facts for both my legal defense and my legal attack. I intend to file harassment charges for civil suit and possible criminal charges against these criminals once I determine who they are. I'm tired of dealing with straw man sham accounting. I want to know who is robbing me and cannot do this without facts. Violation of both one, fair housing, and two, shareholder protection, corporate mismanagement. Laws to protect fair housing are the most basic of any civilization and should not be tampered with for the sake of desperate speculators who somehow manage to find uninformed and ignorant public service to go against age-old wisdom. And remember, farther down the rabbit hole is about going into topics more deeply and recognizing that we've had very advanced civilizations in the past from which to draw wisdom. This has been called a great work, and law is part of it. The Torah is called the law, and we know Judaism as a religion, but it's really a practice of law. I am asking the court to grant me an order demanding that they supply what I need. I need more time to access all facts to launch my legal defense and legal attack to determine accurately how I have been victimized by criminals who may well be addressed with RICO laws. That's about organized crime. Once I have access to the needed paperwork and proof of the crimes against me, I intend to turn it over to the New York, you know, with blessings from the masters always. One can't be arrogant that they can just take on this all by themselves. And, and again, you know, this is a science, the study of understanding the environment and the arrangement of the environment. That's a yantra there. Mantra and yantra equals tantra. Tantra is about manifestation, and I want to manifest some justice and secure my living situation. That's my purpose here. Once I have access to the needed paperwork and proof of the crimes against me, I intend to turn it over to the New York Attorney General and press criminal charges once my research deter determines who the real owners versus straw men are. I will also file a complaint with the Better Business Bureau. I suspect the magnitude of the problem will eventually require a class action lawsuit and enforcement of RICO laws to attack this organized crime by others who have been or are being swindled by this scam, others who share with me the mortal fear of becoming vagrants and look to their government for equal protection and due process of law to uphold constitutional rights to fair housing and privacy. Only by pleading for the courts to ensure due process and equal protection can I protect myself from these criminals who swindle through fraud, lies, deceit, and coercion, as many co-op owners who live in New York, New York are coerced through lack of adequate legal protection out of their property or settle for less protection than our Constitution determines free people should have. If they do not detect the scam or just really want to live in a certain neighborhood that the Attorney General of New York allowed to be beyond the jurisdiction of constitutionally protected fair housing by allowing co-ops in the first place, by the time they are of older age and not as capable of earning as much as they could in their prime, and some of them becoming public access producers with viewers not being too generous with donations, Instead of being able to fall back on true real estate ownership, they must be driven from their homes, passing the scam on to another unsuspecting victim. And then I give some sites here. Uh, Marbury versus Madison, U 5 U.S. 137. The Constitution of these United States is the supreme law of the land. Any law that is repugnant to the Constitution is null and void of law. Murdoch versus Penn, no state shall convert a liberty, the right to the terms of a contract, into a privilege, license it, and attach a fee to it. Shuttlesworth versus Birmingham, if the state converts a liberty into a privilege, the citizen can engage in the right with impunity. Norton versus Shelby, an unconstitutional act is not law. It confers no rights. It imposes no duties, affords no protection. It creates no office. It is in legal contemplation, as inoperative as though it had never been passed. Uh, Brady versus U.S., waivers of constitutional rights, not only must they be Waivers of constitutional rights, not only must they be voluntary, they must be knowingly intelligent acts done with sufficient awareness. If men, through fear, fraud, or mistake, 
should in terms renounce or give up any natural right, the eternal law of reason and the grand end of society would absolutely vacate such renu renunciation. The right to freedom is a gift of Almighty God. It is not in the power of man to alienate this gift and voluntarily become a slave. Samuel Adams, 1772. Um, there's also some other ones. I don't think I'll read them all. They're really good. I should get this posted. Uh, a lot of these are talking about fraud. Silence can only be equated with fraud when there is a legal and moral duty to speak or when an inquiry left unanswered would be intentionally misleading. We cannot condone this shocking conduct. If that is the case, we hope our message is clear. This sort of deception will not be tolerated. And if this is routine, it should be corrected immediately. And then regard a court, courts of record. If the court is not in exercise of its general jurisdiction, but of some special statutory jurisdiction, uh, it is as to such proceeding an inferior court and not aided by presumption in favor of jurisdiction. If the record does not show upon its face the facts necessary to give jurisdiction, they will be presumed not to have existed. And I'm saying, please note the repeated references of fraud in the above co quotes. In the case of the co-op scam, the meaning of fraud should be especially noted. Fraud, an intentional perversion of truth for the purpose of inducing another in reliance upon it to part with some valuable thing belonging to him or to surrender a legal right. A false representation of a matter of fact which deceives and is intended to deceive another so that he shall act upon it to his legal inquiry. It consists of some deceitful practice or willful device resorted to with intent to deprive another of his right or in some manner to do him injury. Black's Law Dictionary, 5th edition, page 594. Take in, then take into account the case of McNally. Fraud in its elementary common law sense of deceit includes the deliberate concealment of material information in a setting of fiduciary obligation. Okay. And then I'm saying for part two about um, this being a bad deal in corporate mismanagement, even if it's not under fair housing violation, even in terms of an investment, it's not being managed in a way that is responsible to the shareholders. On the level of an investment in a corporation, corporate mismanagement is profoundly extreme as unchecked exorbitant maintenance not only robs, there's my tapes there, not only robs what law should ensure is not done, right to fair housing, but the investment cannot mature as so-called owners, in reality victims of the co-op system, are terrorized by landlord-tenant courts who cannot possibly investigate the criminal activities of such gouging and social terror. Depriving citizens of stable housing, being forced out of their homes with rights to privacy violated due to unrealistic inflated costs of maintaining property that is constantly remortgaged with only the bill for the mortgage passed on to the so-called owner, shareholder, while the criminals pocket the cash and hide behind deceptive accounting. I am being violated. I move that this court has lost jurisdiction as this is a criminal matter. Once jurisdiction is challenged, these are sites, the court cannot proceed when it clearly appears that the court lacks jurisdiction. The court has no authority to reach merits, but rather should dismiss the action. There is no discretion to ignore that lack of, of jurisdiction. The burden shifts to the court to prove jurisdiction, and so on. A couple more. In conclusion, when I first purchased my apartment in October 1998, I had assumptions that I was buying real estate and that I could expect ownership benefits of such real estate, and further that the laws of New York, a civilized part of the world, would protect such ownership. Real estate laws have been separate from other investment and speculation consumer protection laws in order to protect the very fabric of society to keep the culture stable and ensure progress. A formula New York City planners themselves determined years ago was that for best social balance and welfare, no more than one-third of income should go towards rent. In this way, the members and citizens of society protected by real estate laws 
upheld by honest service of civil servants, are securely housed even though markets and other investments may go up and down. All proper, honest, and full education of past successful societies have recognized that culture and civilization is protected by law, and that law protects the weak and vulnerable, not just the rich and those who kiss up to them. 26 Gramercy Park is now a place to which you can point with pride and an investment which will pay dividends. A. Curry Presley, President, Board of Directors, July 7, 1997. So I don't know if this board uh, president understood the implications of what was going on with the co-op uh, arrangement or not. Although one would think that stock in Manhattan real estate would merit blue chip status, I have to date received no dividends. I believe I am the victim of fraud, but I have no knowledge yet of how much I have been cheated out of because my adversaries have all the paperwork that I need to prove my case. Only by pleading for the courts to ensure due process and equal protection can I protect myself from these criminals who swindle through fraud, lies, deception, and coercion, as all who want to live in New York, who call New York their home, are coerced through lack of adequate legal protection from living here, or settling for less protection than our Constitution determines free people should have. Now that the fraud can be so clearly seen, with only final paperwork in my case to determine with pinpoint accuracy who the deceivers are, can I expect protection from basic civilized law that recognizes my rights to life, liberty, and happiness, as well as the supreme right of privacy, as locks were changed on my door without due process or my consent? <clears throat> Again, to support my claim that housing court is not the jurisdiction for what my research will determine is criminal once I have access to the facts. An unlawful intrusion that interferes with one's person or property. You can go to the freedictionary.com legal dictionary to get this. An, um, an unlawful intrusion that interferes with one's person or property. Tort law. Originally in England was the action of trespass. Initially, trespass was any wrongfully, wrongful conduct directly causing injury or loss. In modern law, trespass in is, is an unauthorized entry upon land. A trespass gives the aggrieved party the right to bring a civil lawsuit and collect damages as compensation for the interference and for any harm suffered. Trespass is an intentional tort and in some in circumstances can be punished as a crime criminal trespass. At common law, trespass was not criminal unless it was accomplished by violence or breached the peace. Some modern statutes, statutes make any unlawful entry into another's property a crime. The trespass involves violence or injury to a person or property. It is, all, it is always considered criminal. And penalties may be increased for more serious or malicious acts. Now, let's imagine taking away an apartment. Um, criminal intent may have to be proved to convict under some statute, statutes, but in some states, trespass is a criminal offense regardless of the defendant's intent. So we'll have to find out how New York is about that. Some statutes consider to trespass criminal only if the defendant has an unlawful purpose in entering or remaining in the place where he has no right to be. So why was my property entered into, I think, in 2004, and the locks changed? Due process and equal protection will protect me from slavery through theft of property. And in every sense of the word, I mean that word slavery. Today, the co-op legal arrangement leads to slavery through theft of property unprotected by adequate or ignored safeguards. As more income goes towards those who rule access to needed housing, hiding behind meaningless terms switched only for short-term gain, but long gain, but long term social disaster, that is, pretending that rent is really maintenance. In the 10 years and over $100,000 I have paid in maintenance, I've only received physically three large windows and one small bathroom window in a building that, in the accounting, is depreciated every 27 years. What total nonsense! A 322 square foot apartment bought as a pied-a-terre costs over $900 a month to maintain. That is not fair. Those are my dad's x-rays, by the way. 
I do a lot of research on cancer and cannabis, hemp oil, how it can help restore calcium in the bones. I love my apartment, and I've decorated it to support myself energetically. Why should the jurisdiction of huge areas of New York, those under the co-op rules, be above constitutional freedoms? These laws do not protect the weak and vulnerable. And predictably, like a cancer, the small number of monopolists strangle the culture as right to fair housing is eclipsed under the fraud of ownership of shares with constant pressure to sell out and get out before it is too late. Good citizens, rich in experience and wisdom, are denied to the society as they are churned for fresh victims as unsustainable as the unsustainable co-op system pretending sham legal status to not be rent and monopoly grinds on ignored by misdirected or complicit public servants, truly instruments of terror and enemies of a free people. Housing courts were set in place for rent issues and society has channels that deal, albeit, in, albeit inadequately, with critically important rent control. No such protections exist for the co-op shareholder who suffers with neither the benefit of real ownership squandered away when the first New York Attorney General okayed it, and he, the co-op shareholder, has neither the protection given to true tenants. Woe was the day the Attorney General of New York appro approved the criminal co-op plan. This crime should be investigated as soon as possible. For even if done in innocence and ignorance of such great thinkers of the past as Henry George, whose monumental book of 1880, Progress and Poverty, spelled out the dangers of a society that cannot ensure its citizens a fair housing and does not allow one to remain in their home being forced to pay exorbitant rents in the co-op system deceptively called maintenance demanded by the hidden monopolist, I intend to uncover once I have access to the facts I need in my particular case. In addition to informing the Attorney General of New York and the Better Business Bureau, I intend to take this case, once I research it well, to the keepers of the wisdom of great thinkers like Henry George, who 100 years ago were known by every intellectual, but today, despite organizations like the Robert Schockenbach Foundation and the Henry George School, who also cower under fear of displeasing the status quo, are unknown today and thus incapable of informing those either ignorantly going along or directly complicit with the scam and shame imposed on an otherwise free people. Perhaps this legal action will give these organizations the much needed impetus to inform those who are so ignorant they don't know how to formulate the right questions to restore our great nation to the standards our founding fathers worked so hard to achieve. In order to live in New York, otherwise upstanding, respectable people are coerced into accepting an unacceptable agreement with predictable outcomes. In other words, so many people uh, who can no longer keep their co-ops, this, this, this would have been predictable a long time ago. Uh, in order to live in New York, otherwise upstanding, respectable people are coerced into accepting an unacceptable agreement with predictable outcomes. If the criminal's puppets had any motivation or adequate education to understand their true responsibility to society as civil servants, a society that is stable has people with their need for fair housing satisfied. I reiterate, as the owner of an apartment, as the owner not of an apartment but shares in a corporation that due to the term maintenance really hides the effects of rent, what the market will bear with no benefit of that rising market that respected real estate laws would have ensured to true owners, the investment in the shares cannot mature and remain strangled under the weight of inflated and fraudulent maintenance, flat out robbery. I intend to point out that my opponent has violated me and committed crimes against me, and that only a criminal court has the proper jurisdiction, not a housing court that upholds rental agreements that I do not have with my adversary, nor would my adversary challenge this reality unless he too will join me in my fight against the corruption of the co-op laws, laws which violate our society to its very core. And then I sign it, and then this got notarized, and I send, I'm going to send it to Cuomo. As it turns out, once I gave the, uh, I filed it at the landlord-tenants 
office. She gave me a copy that I was supposed to take up to be heard, and then uh, some court assistant took me aside and said that they need time to go over the motion, and they very happily set another date for me, which will be, will be the 11th. However, my adversary here, which would be Yehuda M. Fishman, uh, he needs time to give a rebuttal to this. And remember, I asked them to, you know, due to my not being a lawyer, I motioned the court to accept this motion, although not having been served within the seven-day period within which to bring motions. So he will have until the 5th of August for his rebuttal to what I'm saying, and then I can do some paperwork and bring it to court with me on the uh, 11th. So I didn't quite have my day in court, but at least I got my paperwork in court. Paula Gloria over in Haven. I want to give a special honorable mention to New York um, Camp Citizens Against Marijuana Prohibition. It's about free people. Because this is what started it all. It was reading the wording on their little uh, postcard that they were handing out that I went up to Albany because these people stick close to the cancer cure and into freeing the prisons. No hemp or cannabis legislation is, is, is really honest if it doesn't free prisoners uh, for these victimless crimes and if it doesn't discuss the cancer cure because the cancer cure means you need high quantities and you need good quality. So it's saying, stand up, New York. Let's be brave. Let's be courageous. Let's do the right thing. And unfortunately, the planting season, is, you know, since it's now uh, the end of July, has passed, so we've got to get ready for the next season. So I'm hoping that in many ways court will be the place where this battle takes place because people can quietly look over the evidence. And the evidence is, is that in 1974 the cancer cure was suppressed. I'm only dealing in my case with right to privacy, but, you know, our constitutional freedoms are the point, and the point is standing up for them. And this turns out to be a very, very effective and powerful way to operate in court. I highly, highly encourage my viewers to learn more about it and to really bring the power inside you and to understand really who you are. Spiritual practice is not something airy-fairy. It's, it's a very deep wisdom. It's a deep science. And throughout all the ages, spiritual science has been studied for the sake of betterment and well-being to society at large. And the most important thing is the intention that you have to help others. When your intention is to help others, you get the support you need. And so there's a whole science to the love and the well-being of all members of society, watched over and cared for by those of greater consciousness, inspiring everybody to move into greater consciousness. Greater freedom implies also, well, greater status to take care of things implies greater responsibility, which some could look upon as lack of freedom. This was a very nice event over in Hoboken about UFOs. It's time for no more secrets. And here we have Isis and Horus, oftentimes considered the Christian theme. Although I've pointed out that in Judaism, many, many features of Christianity are there, particularly the resurrection. This was something done by the artist Al Duffy when I was involved in the 9-11 uh, stuff. That's when 9-11 was justifying going into Iraq. That's the anchor woman at CNN. There's Osama bin Laden. I was really delighted that uh, Posar brought somebody, I posted someone on my site who was Osama bin Laden's lover. Very interesting lady I hope to meet in the future. This was sort of more in the venting against Bush but now Bush is gone, and in many ways things are worse. But like I say, we can, we can step up to, uh, to our abilities 
as sovereign human beings to push for ensuring that our constitutional freedoms stay free. Helping to move humanity towards a, a new and uh, liberated condition that we all aspire to. After we present those, we would like to then to come back and conversations again. And please thank you for this particular uh, program. How are you doing again? Thank you. Very, very, very much. Hey, Jay, is your dad there? Um, he is in the bathroom. So oh, okay. Sure. Tell him to call me. Oh, uh, yeah. It, every single thing you sent me really was helpful. I didn't use all of the sites. But that, but I found the some trespasser thing. Yeah, I got. I mean, Sir Juris is the way to go. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 really the only way to go if you know the law. Yeah. And you have to have proper conduct in court. You can't be rude and disrespectful. Right. You have to stand firm and be assertive of your rights. Yeah. No, you really, really feel. I mean, I really. Felt I had a friend who went, I was trying to get to represent himself. Uh huh. And it was a mistake. He went into court. He went into court, and he threatened the cop that he was going to kill the cop, and he threatened <laughs> to kill the cop's whole family. You oh my can't gosh. do that. No, of course not. Do he just got emotionally carried away? Because I felt like I was protecting. Yeah, yeah, that's what happened. He was frustrated and he got emotional, but he would really never do such a thing. You know, right. he's not the violent fighting type. He's the mousy type. <laughs> so his mouth got him in trouble, and it prejudiced the prosecution against him, and the prosecutor gave him an excessive sentence to teach him a lesson. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you have to really watch what you say in court, because there is a public record. Did he do his and good... here's Joe. Hello? Well, Joe, it worked fabulously. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, they've got to have time for a rebuttal to what I did, and that has to be into me by the 5th because I want to go up and see, be at your thing on the 6th because Posar, who helped me all last night, um, I see that I'm coming on MNN right now. Anyway, um, so then uh, on the 5th, he has to supply me with his answer. That's Yehuda Fishman. And then, and then you get to rebut him again. Yes, and I have to email it to him before the 11th, and then we go back in on the 11th. But I really, really can't see how they can justify jurisdiction in the housing court. Yeah. But anyway, so I just I read the whole thing, and I think I'll do it as a roll-in on Wednesday, and then I'll take calls because I am so excited about this. I think more people, if more people understood what sovereign human beings meant, uh, we could get our country in better shape. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I've been saying. Yep. <laughs> yep. Any comments on your case? On my case? Yeah, because I'm recording this. No, I'm still working on the paperwork, and uh, I don't know. I'm waiting. I, I, today, actually, I want to try to go get my car fixed so I can have a car to come see you. All right. Come see all the viewers. Because I'm sure people will start to, you know, have questions and talk. Jay just said that a friend of his mouthed off in court and got violent, even though he's not the violent type. Yeah, he said really stupid stuff. Yeah. I think being a sovereign human being means taking a lot of responsibility, being, you know, organized, disciplined. Because when you do that, you, you really see the emergence of some real orderliness in nature, and you want to reflect that orderliness. And part of it is that everybody should have access to the resources, including cannabis, including housing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad it went good for you in court. Yeah, I mean, I felt like a connection was made. I felt like now we can sit down and, and work it out. Yeah, well, their lawyer was there in court. Great. Hi, this is Paula Gloria, and this show is called Farther Down the Rabbit Hole. Uh, I want you to call 212-757-1393 so we can get some comments on this really provocatively interesting information. And since uh, the mics are all work, so DMT, thank you for joining me. Thank you very much for asking me to come. It's a big pleasure for me to be on your show, especially live, and hope that people 
seeing this would learn something and call in and to talk to us because today my good friend Paula Gloria is trying to treat a very ambitious topics that is the law and the philosophy and religion. and religion are they one and of course if she talked to the right person whose DMT got 3.0 the answer would be a resounding yes but let me pass the word to Paula great um, do you want to do a close-up on DMT and he can explain his show and where he's coming because you're coming live too aren't you uh, I don't do live. oh you have a call Hi, okay. caller I'm just calling because I wanted to congratulate you on your quite brilliant presentation insofar as the fraudulent co-op concept in New York is concerned and your uh, incredibly brilliant uh, presentation of the rights of uh, what it means to be a sovereign person with, uh, with rights, which most people have never heard of. My only <laughs> question to you is, as a student at the uh, Benjamin uh, Cardoza Law School, uh, why would you diminish the importance, the brilliance of your presentation with uh, the gentleman you have on your uh, show with you? I've seen some of his work. It is, uh, it, 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 it is so disappointing that... Uh, Don't worry. Uh, you would have this person there. I've seen some of his work on your m and station, and, and it's nothing short of pornographic uh, pictures. Oh, uh, through, oh. Through in with uh, 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 scoffings concerning Judeo-Christian uh, beliefs. He mentions uh, occasionally Moses, uh, Abraham, then he talks about Jesus all, this, all the while uh, showing uh, pornographic images. I don't know what exactly motivates this person, but uh, I'm very proud of what you're doing, and I commend you, and uh, your fight is not yours alone. It is a fight for tens of thousands of people in this city who have been victimized by the co-op concept, the fraudulent co-op concept, and uh, your work is precisely what public access television is supposed to be about. Congratulations. And uh, you have my best wishes. Uh, caller, I really, really want to thank you for that, for that call. Um, can you switch over to camera three, uh, switcher? Because I want the, yeah, I want the close up here. One thing about DMT's work that's really good is it got you to call up and make a comment about it. The first thing about meaningful community television is to get the excitement of dialogue and interaction between members of the community. And particularly, if you have different opinions, that's all the better that somebody's courageous enough to come up with, say, an unpopular opinion. So I'm going to turn this over to my esteemed guest so Ms. he can... Paula, can I just say one quick uh, statement? Yes, yes. I would just like to say that I did not call because I saw the gentleman on your show. I called because of you exclusively. Uh, what you were doing and saying, I will at the, uh, at, 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 at the risk of appearing or, or sounding redundant, what you are doing is exactly what public access is supposed to be about, which is what motivated me to call. What that gentleman on your show is doing has nothing to do with what taxpayer dollars are being funneled into public access for. and. Uh, Okay. That's all I, I can Okay, say. okay. I, I hear you, and I really thank you for calling. Um, well, thank you. Thank on you. Behalf of and, all of us. and and can you come? And can you not only be a call in? Can you one of these days be a walk in? Come down here and join me in front of the camera. Well, Miss Paul, your uh, brilliance and intelligence is equaled only by your graciousness. Of course, I would more than, be more than happy to do that, and I look forward to it. Okay, great. Thank you so much, caller. Bye-bye now. Bye. So, so, DMT, we've had this discussion before about pornography, and, and let me... You defend yourself, and then let's. Uh, I don't have may, to defend myself. Maybe defend isn't the right word. Can right. we have a two shot when I'm talking to both? both okay, of us? so two let shot me switcher, switcher, two the shot. The caller, great. Whose yeah. name we don't know, and uh, I see very clearly that he take advantage of the show just to put a lot of praise to Paula Gloria and to try to put me down without knowing that much. Because oh, can actually, we make your phone go down. Okay. 
Just a second. Okay, I'm while sure BMT, that he's still while listening. While BMT's phone is down, I just want to remind you, keep calling us, and we can take a couple at a time so we can have you on hold. And then uh, they'll switch you over. And then just look for an opportune moment to interject your question. Uh, so that we can get as much activity rolling along what as possible. What you see on my show. You know, I don't want excessive I know. praise. No, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. just talking to him very shortly because his commentary doesn't even deserve Too an much headroom here. And I don't even have to justify myself <laughs> for what you. I'm doing. Because actually, the images in the show have nothing to do Your with phone's the... Can you shut it off for a Yeah, shut it, it, it off for com It comes through from the mic really bad. Yeah. Like, take the battery out. Sometimes that works. So while DMT is uh, dealing with his telephone, I just want to say that law, religion, and philosophy has been considered one topic. Now, some people feel that these topics are very boring, you know, motions in court and things like that. And yet, uh, unless we can take our philosophy and put it into action to create something better, then uh, it's just philosophy. It's, it's, it's meaningless. And I think you felt that by having provocative pictures of women, people would pay attention to another message that was uh, more sublime. Because I've always enjoyed philosophical discourse with you. I've, you know, I, I mean. There are a few people who are of the opinions that religions and serious topics cannot be discussed when you can see also the beautiful woman. That's wrong. That's how you have also to watch my show that's called The G Angels. And at that time, and you had to see the ideas deep down. And when you see, let's say, the beautiful body of a female who is Eve, that was created by God, and that's given to Adam the first day when he was born. There's nothing wrong with that. That's how when you see it wrong, there's something wrong with your own mind. So that's what well, Park is said. But let's not make people wrong either if no, they no. think it's wrong. That's so my we're talking about now. sex positive as opposed to sex negative. So if you have any comments about this sex positivity or sex negativity, call up about that topic. Because I know when I discovered the 9-11 uh, exotic weaponry explanation as opposed to controlled demolition. I was so happy. I wanted to take all my clothes off and just run and dance <laughs> and for, enjoy in the streets, you know, because it's about freedom. Yes. But, but we do have a society that has That's so That's true, too. Carla should have watched another show of Pola, and maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe he would not say the same thing to, like he said today. So, bye. Let's talk about he's, something he's off, more serious. Okay. Any other callers there? The, it, it, put the telephone number. Uh, we already know today's topic is law, religion, and philosophy. We know that the call-ins are at 12.30, so we don't need to use that one. Yeah, that's a good one. And uh, maybe you can set the camera a little higher so it doesn't. Yeah, okay, perfect, great. So anybody have any calls about whether law, religion, and philosophy is one study or whether sex positivity can actually help us to... Um, step up to our responsibilities better because, uh, you know, there's a certain joy that men have looking at beautiful women, right? So you're trying to channel that joy into using the energy from the joy into tackling difficult topics like the meaning of life, our relationship to God, our relationship to each other in society. That part, I would say that we talk about today's topics with you. And that has nothing to do with, let's say, the images that I present in my TV show that he watched from 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. Okay, anybody excellent. out there from 3 so a.m. Right to 4 a.m. that wants to make a comment? No, we don't, we don't need to talk about that unless someone will No, I want people again. who like your oh, work. Okay. All people right. will say, I love that. You know, I wasn't thinking about But today is about your job, about your motion, and about things that I would like on to, to, to comment about uh, if, it for if, you. If you can keep it philosophical. Of course. Then okay. I would like your comments about my motion. Was it too mean and aggressive that I felt criminals are overcharging me? To no. To say move For it out of the housing court into a criminal court? <laughs> that you are not a lawyer. So you write as a person who is not a lawyer. And the way you write <laughs> on it, and I may not be able to support you on your motion because if I was the judge, I would not be embarrassed at all by this kind of motion. You wouldn't be embarrassed? No, because the way you do it is wrong formally. You would? So you're saying the judge would or would not be embarrassed? No, no, no. He would because, not be embarrassed? Right, 
because it's, he would have to deny your motion for many technical reasons. It has nothing to do with you being offensive in a language. And it has nothing to do with you being very aggressive against the plaintiff. Because apparently, this is the opposition to a motion or to a complaint by the plaintiff against you, right? Mm -hmm. So what you have to use first, there's a lot of uh, legal language that you don't use because you're not familiar with that. Right. For example, you say, I want to prepare my attack. Actually, it just means that you want to prepare your defense and counterclaim. Actually, it's not even defense. The idea no, of going say, serve jurors way. as a sovereign human way. being first, is that... First, if you are the defendant in the lawsuit and there's a plaintiff, so your first duty is to defend yourself. And if you say that it's too easy to defend yourself, that's fine. No, but it's, at not least... about, it's not about too easy. Uh, the idea of being a sovereign human being is not giving up I mean, too easy, that means you have a good your, case. It's, it's not, you believe that you have a good case against them. That's what I'm saying, easy, from that well, viewpoint. Well, I don't think it's easy because the co-op system itself is something that it's, I feel, when you look at it deeply, violates federal constitutional fair housing laws. You're turning housing into speculation. And then you misinform people by using words like co-op, cooperative, maintenance, to hide words like monopoly, that you don't really own it at all. And even the fact that they put it in landlord-tenants court means that everybody knows these words are a scam. That I don't have a rental agreement. I don't have a landlord. Theoretically, I'm having my money wasted by Yehuda Fishman because he's working for me. I'm a shareholder. My, then, then I, it's, I it guess has to be in a corporate court. No, of course, it's not corporate court either. In it's, that I time, mean, there isn't such if, a thing. if let's say the co-op system is allowed by the law Sorry, of New York State. Call. Okay, caller, what would you like to say? Caller, Gloria, yes. how are you? Good. I want to say I uh, love your show. I think you are one in a million. You are um, a revolutionary, and I love your show. And I, I don't know your guest very well. Can, so can you? One, so he's a wonderful man, a wonderful attorney, I think, with great information. My question is, very quickly, um, if they do, if we could legalize it in New York City, because it is sort of legal in California, and people pay taxes on marijuana, would, would, if, do you think the reason why it's not legal in New York is because New Yorkers don't want to pay the taxes? you know, give the government their money. And if we do pay taxes, if they do legalize it, do you think it will be a problem? And, you know, and also, I want to make one more quick point, if that's a little political, if that's all right? Yes, please. Um, I mean, I wish you were coming down. I wish you were one of the walk-ins, but I'm going to have to get my website skills in order so I can notify people about the schedule so people will know when they can come down and walk in and make their comments because that's the idea of community TV. No, keep going. I'm very interested in what you're saying. Oh, okay, absolutely. Uh, I was kind of concerned about uh, also um, there was a, a rumor stating that there was some I don't know, I didn't see the C-SPAN. Some uh, senator was advocating uh, having people on unemployment and veterans and uh, drug tested for marijuana and other drugs for unemployment benefits, and I think that's ridiculous. And do you think they will extend the unemployment benefit bill? Because I haven't heard, I see the, the rigmarole, but I don't see anything, any finality in it. Because I am, I, I am a hardworking American, um, just like you, and, and I'm unemployed, and I'm, I have two dogs and a cat, and, uh, <laughs> and I wish I had some weed now, but I, I just don't, don't know if they're going to um, get this together because I'm on my last leg. And I, in, in my opinion, I think it's uh, with population control and also with the marijuana thing. Uh, marijuana is totally innocent and it's totally free, it's a natural thing. And I don't know why the government has so much control over it. But I want to say thank you for your time, and I'll, I'll, I'll hang up and, and let you speak. 
Um, thank you very much, caller. You, you've, the caller has gone over a, a huge number of topics, and I'm feeling at the basis of the topics and the problems that he's talking about is the problem of monopoly. And this problem of monopoly cannot be overstated enough. And even in my motion, I was saying that organizations like the Robert Schockenbach Foundation, the Henry George School, um, their efforts aren't vigorous enough. They're not really hitting and reaching the public so that the public even understands how to ask the right questions. And it's very important that we not become overly paranoid. And I think the, uh, the medical term is dysphoria. And that can also be a function of expanded awareness, that you want your awareness to be expanded in a comfortable, easy way so that as more knowledge comes to you, you can act in a meaningful way on that knowledge. Uh, again, I'm hoping that the caller, when he says he's on his last legs, he just simply means his last legs financially and not health-wise. But even if it's health-wise that he's on his last legs, medical marijuana is not just about feeling a little less pain, although it's probably good for that too. Although if you have really heavy-duty pain, and I'm beginning to see this, I think we should reconsider the opiates as opposed to um, just saying, you know, make it into heroin and then get people strung out and ruin neighborhoods. There, there are ways of dealing with the gifts of the earth. I think the fact that we even have a war on drugs distinguishes our society uh, in a very poor way from other civilizations who in their religious uh, scripture and scrolls actually have prayers to the plants. They're praying to the plant. So there's this idea of reverence and respect for gifts of the earth. Because what is medicine can also be food, or what is food is also medicine. So we want to make sure that what we're ingesting is good. But I also think we shouldn't be overly concerned about toxicity, because I think it's a question of balance. In India, when masters are evolved to a certain point, part of their processes, and tantra can also mean a process, using mantra vibrations that you hear, tantra that you see, and everybody knows this. Everybody likes to be in beautiful physical surroundings, like even with your so-called pornography. You don't call it pornography. <laughs> what do you call it? Sex positive? You know, you're, Me? you're, you're using I, alluring women to get them to listen to your I, message. I, actually, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, otherwise, if you want to see the advertisement of every day, assuming they want to sell a car, there's no reason. But most of the time, they still show beautiful girls next to the uh, car. Is that not true? So yeah. it's really in the culture. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. What's wrong is how you react to that. Right. And what you do with that. Right. And right. not just the image by but, itself. But if, if people are upset because there is some pornography, or they're upset because they're being thrown out of their house, being upset is not a good thing. Now, if you smoke marijuana or take any kind of drugs, even prescription drugs for depression or whatever, if you don't support that with some honest psychological work on yourself, then you become dependent. So it's not the drugs per se, whether they're pharmaceutical or whether they're natural, it's how we use them. And I think that's the idea of the prayers that that past civilizations have had when they had a deep reverence for their environment and a, and a sense of gratitude. And I think right now, you know, this war on drugs, it's very questionable, the SWAT teams that are coming in. And I mean, I even have one where they're watching Nintendo and playing the game. It's, it's sort of a money-making sort of latched on uh, industry to keep the prisons full. They certainly clog up the courts. I think until you had the war on drugs, I think you had a chance to have a good legal system. Now you've got plea bargaining. Even plea bargaining implies a certain complicity that the prosecutor has with the judge. I think that's even questionable how constitutional that is. But when you've got so many cases because you've made people criminals for things that should be inalienable rights to just th gather plants and heal yourself. I think the best arguments in support of the legalization of the marijuana, which is, let's say, a minor drug, not as strong as cocaine or heroin, is the comparison with alcohol. Yeah. At one time, they but had even also to prohibit that, and right. later on, they had to rebuild the law. So it's still a matter of option and how to control all that in the long run. So now. Lip. But just a second, as an educated man, you know about the Euripides and the Bakian 
uh, play, the ancient Greek play. It's all about uh, reverie using alcohol. So in ancient Greek culture, they used alcohol religiously. And today, it's just something done to sort of socially loosen up. So I think all of these, and even cocaine and heroin you're talking about, I know a case right now where somebody could use some very serious opiates. There's somebody in a lot of pain, a lot of pain. So you just have to use it right. It's not that one's better than the other. You so need to know if you really it. want my opinions on actually everything, what to do with anything, it's like abortion, uh, rapes, AIDS, and also drugs, etc., then I have only one formula that I have expressed very clearly in my messages of every day now. It's called APIA and AR. As long as you go by the formula of APIA in AR, then you can find out the solution for everything. Say, what and is RPR and AR? The first R is reliability. That means you keep your promise, you do whatever you say, and we don't know what's the truth in this world, but if you say it, you mean it, and you keep your promise. So you can be reliable. You are someone that other people can rely on. So that's all what we can count on you. Assuming I want to say that I would look for, let's say, to come to your show tomorrow. That's what I said yesterday. And today I show up very early to make sure that I won't miss it. And I even come one hour earlier. That's reliable reliable. Even though once I am on your show, I may not agree with you, and I may get a yeah, lot of fine. people who also call and, <laughs> and make me unwelcome on this show, that's fine with me too. But that's reliable, and we don't know what's the truth, see? That's the point. If I did not want to come, Look at I would have caller, said that. That caller is going to get people interested in tuning in between 3 and, and 4 <laughs> in the morning. Right, to, what, tell, when is your show coming? It on is at 3 a.m. this morning, and it's 3 a.m. every day from Monday to Friday, and from 3 to 4 a.m. 3 to you, 4 a.m. And if you're channel not in one. Manhattan and you cannot watch directly Channel 3 of MNN Network, then you can tune in MNN.org okay. on, let's say, the Internet. Channel and 3 you, is Spirit? Yes. And once you get in, you have to click on Watch MNN Live, Tree Live. So you can watch it and can judge by yourself that the show is not for amateur. The show is for adult people who are, let's say, responsible and right. who know what they do. And they have RPN AR. And they would see that, according to my philosophy, there's only one thing left in this life where you can enjoy yourself. It just watch what you find out beautiful. Besides that, Oh, there's not much you can do with my philosophy. That is wrong. So this is Paula Gloria thanking you for joining me on this excursion farther down the rabbit hole. I encourage you to listen to my esteemed guest's show. Three in the morning. Yes, yeah, three on to four. On MNM three. Yeah. I hope we have more opportunities. You're welcome. We'll handle. be back here maybe every week. Okay, great. So, Thank you. you.